Hi, I'm John Brust here with another edition of the Oracle Database podcast series. Joining me today is Dan Morgan, Oracle Ace Director and user of Oracle Database 11G for over two years. Dan, thanks for joining us today at Oracle headquarters. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for the invitation. We're on BMW Oracle Racing USA 71, the yacht from 2003 America's Cup. And Dan, I understand you're a sailor. I've got a 50-footer of my own, although it's not quite as nice as this boat. Dan, we'd like to talk to you today about Oracle Advanced Compression, Oracle Partitioning, and then the few of the things that you do as an Oracle Ace Director. So let's take a walk to the studio for a chat. Wonderful. And also a presentation for the Oracle Gems, which is what we want to do over the next few minutes is talk about Oracle Advanced Compression, Oracle Partitioning, and then really some of the other hidden gems in Oracle Database 11G that you're familiar with and other users may want to hear about. Happy to help you with what experience I have had with them. Let's start with Oracle Advanced Compression. This has been one of the most popular options in Oracle Database 11G. Uh, why is this the case? Part of the reason I think people are beginning to recognize the value in advanced compression and in all of the Oracle compression capabilities is that they're able to trade a small amount of money spent on a database option mm -hmm. for a large amount of money that they're spending in the data center, both in terms of hardware, in terms of space, in terms of electricity, air conditioning. You said save costs in hardware. Well, how does that, that take place? Well, I'll give you an example. I've got an existing customer right now in the Seattle area that's looking at the fact that they've got a SAN where they are literally running out of space on the sand. They know six months, a year from now, that sand's not going to cut it for them. Right. They had looked into the cost of bringing in new storage hardware. It would have been over a half a million dollars for them to do that. And then they would have had to deal with the question of where were they going to rack it and all of the downtime in moving their data over. With advanced compression, they're going to be able to continue to use their existing storage array and uh, not spend the money on the new hardware, the new overhead. Dan, what rates of compression are you seeing with advanced compression? I've done a lot of benchmarking in my lab of advanced compression. And what I'm seeing routinely is 300 to 400% compression on real world data. And that's a significant amount of money. Well, when you can think in terms of putting 40 terabytes into 10 terabytes of storage, mm -hmm. you're saving essentially the cost of buying 30 terabytes of disk, you're talking about savings on the electricity, talking about savings even down to the square footage in the data center because you have to have some place to put it. Dan, I know another popular option with Oracle Database 11G is partitioning. Uh, what are you seeing in the way of partitioning? I know it's oftentimes used with advanced compression. Yes, well partitioning's been around since 8i and we've seen enhancements over the years to it. With advanced compression, we can now actually merge our partitioning option with the advanced compression mm -hmm. and leverage both capabilities. The partitioning is giving us improved performance in terms of accessing our data and improved manageability. Mm -hmm. The compression is giving us the ability to do things such as compress older partitions, compress data that's not accessed as often. Although I have to also tell you that we are seeing cases with real-world data where compression is giving us faster access, actually improving performance, because what we're seeing is that we have a lot less bytes that we have to read and write to disk. And are you, are you seeing a lot of users um, using tiered storage along with advanced compression? Definitely seeing more and more movement into tiered storage. We're seeing that the message has gotten out that you don't have to put rarely access data on your fastest disk that you can right. use slower, less expensive disk for holding things like backups, archived redo logs, older partitions, lots of things that don't need to be on the really expensive disk. And so, I mean, that combined with advanced compression, you're starting to see exponential cost savings. Definitely seeing a lot of cost savings there and also seeing it merge with another Oracle feature, which is ASM, right. where we can create ASM disk groups on slower storage, or less expensive storage, other ASM disk groups on our faster storage, and now merge that with the ability to then partition, taking advantage of those disk groups, and compress selectively by partition or compress entire tables. 
you mentioned a few moments ago about Oracle partitioning being around um, for a while now. What have you seen specifically um, improved with Oracle Database 11G? 11G probably is the largest single enhancement to partitioning that we've seen since partitioning first became available to us. Mm -hmm. Oracle's added partitioning by reference, which essentially means I can now use a foreign key relationship to partition based on a parent table. I've got partitioning by virtual column, where I can now partition by the activities of a function or a multiplication or some other action taking place with respect to my data that isn't necessarily data that's being actively stored in my table. I can partition by system, which is a way of saying that I want to write my own partitioning algorithm. And I know you've worked with a lot of customers specifically um, with Oracle Partition. Um, what kind of customers are best suited for this option? For partitioning option, we normally think, in the short, or more traditionally think, in terms of really large tables. Okay. We think in terms of banks, we think in terms of telecommunication companies. What we're seeing now is that partitioning has value everywhere, even on smaller databases, because end users are expecting faster access times. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing a significant improvement in maintenance. So you're seeing faster performance and lower costs combined. Faster performance, lower cost, and we're seeing that this now has application to more than just the largest customers. Now, even some of the smaller and medium-sized customers of Oracle Database are in fact leveraging these capabilities and seeing dramatic improvements. Dan, as an Oracle ace, part of your responsibility is having the technical expertise, but also um, contributing back to the Oracle community is part of it too. Uh, what have you contributed back to the community? You're absolutely right. A major part of the community of Oracle aces and Oracle ace directors is not just our technical knowledge. It's what we're giving back. It's how we're helping other people gain expertise. I've really been focusing on two things. One is my personal website, which is morganslibrary.org, which is live demos of a very substantial amount of Oracle technology. Okay. And there in that library, you're going to find live demos of all the things that we've been talking about, things like advanced compression demos, partitioning demos. The other thing that I do is a lot of speaking at Oracle conferences. Just in the last year, I have been in Europe a number of times. I've spoken at uh, UKOUG, at Oracle User Group Finland, Oracle User Group Norway. I've also done a number of conferences here in the US, and a lot of my presentations relate to what I call Oracle Gems. Dan, give us an example of one of those Oracle Gems that you've presented at a user group conference. One of the most popular gems that I present, and I've been presenting this one now for a few years because it's been substantially enhanced in Oracle Database 11G, is PL SQL warnings. These are of value both to DBAs and developers, and the warnings are in a sense like the syntax exceptions that we get when we compile PL SQL objects. But in this case, what they're doing is warning us about things that we've done in our code that are suboptimal, telling us that we've accidentally used reserved words, or telling us that we've written an if statement where part of it won't be executed based on our logic. So these are really, really valuable. They have essentially no overhead and can greatly enhance the quality of code that's being produced by developers and allows DBAs to make sure that what they stick on a production system really is good quality code. And this is something that um, some DBAs may not be aware of. From my experience, most DBAs and developers are not aware of these things, and they've been included as part of the normal Oracle licensing, so it's not something that you have to get in addition. It just comes inside the database, do an alter ses session or alter system, and you turn them on, and they're there for you. Dan, thank you for the Oracle Gem, and thank you for joining us here at Oracle today. Thank you all for joining us as well. And to learn more about Oracle Database 11G, Oracle Advanced Compression, Oracle Partitioning, please go to oracle.com forward slash database.